Okay, today I'm going to walk through how to make a uh, simple bar plot because I realized that I don't have a video on bar plots. So I'm going to make a bar plot and then I'm going to make it uh, a little bit more complicated. I'm going to make a divergent bar plot. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just load in some data. I went and found some data on heights across different countries for male and females. And so that's what we're going to be looking at. I've got uh, a couple different countries here, male and female for each, and then their height in centimeters. And so we will uh, go ahead and plot their heights as a simple bar plot. So this is relatively straightforward. As long as you have it in this format here, uh, you are good to go. So a lot of times you're probably gonna have individual data and you're gonna need to find the means before you do that. Uh, but once you have it to that point, you can just go ahead and plot it. It's relatively straightforward. We call ggplot. I'm going to do my data. On our x-axis, we are going to have uh, the country. Let me see what I labeled these actually. Country, gender, and height. So on the x-axis, we are going to have country. On the y-axis, we are going to have height. And we are going to fill these by gender. And in ggplot, there is a geom bar. And what you do in geom bar is you call in the stat of identity. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that is. Okay, so there you go. These are stacked though. All right, so what I actually want to do is put these side by side so that they're not stacked on top of each other. And to do that in geom bar, we're going to call position dodge simple as that see so that looks pretty good you can of course change things up a bit in the themes so call them theme classic all right then you can go through and make sure your labels are are correct so um you know make sure you put centimeters next to the height thing here for example to call in your units uh, the other thing that you can do is cord flip this so you can flip it so that it's sideways so you do that just by calling chord flip and that's going to flip your axes, right? So you might wanna see it like this. Okay, let's do a divergent bar plot. A divergent bar plot is going to be uh, similar to what we're looking at right now, but instead of everything pointed in one direction, they will be in line with each other and pointed in opposite directions. And so we have to get uh, a little bit, it's not really that tricky, um, but we do have to do a few things with our data before we do that. Let's go ahead and clear this plot out so it's not in our way. So we're actually gonna have to manipulate the data a little bit before we plot our divergent um, bar plot. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're going to essentially just flip, uh, well, let's flip the female, um, let's flip the, the female heights so that they're negative. And so that will point it in the opposite direction. We'll keep the male heights positive, and then we will have to basically relabel the negatives into positives when we actually actually plot it. So the first thing we'll do is um, flip some of the values. So we'll call in my data, and then we're going to call mutate. And the thing that we're trying to mutate is our height column. And we're going to do this with an if else call. So in if else, we're going to say uh, gender equal to male, then height will be equal to height, else height will be equal to negative one times height. So if you're not familiar with if else, you're basically saying if gender is equal to male, height is equal to height, else, so if gender is equal to female or not equal to male, height is equal to negative one times height. So this is just going to inverse uh, our females. And so I'll pull up my data so we can make sure that that happened. And now you can see that our data hasn't changed other than it's just become inverse. So it's been multiplied by negative one for the females. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plot this again. It's gonna be very similar. So we're gonna say ggplot, uh, my data, all of the first part of this is exactly the same. X is equal to country. 
y is equal to height and then fill will be equal to gender and we're going to call in geom bar stat equal to identity and then we will do a chord flip and we'll call in our theme classic let's take a look okay so there you have it right so it's starting to look a little bit better um, but what I said before was you'll see that these are negative and someone is obviously not you know, negative 150 centimeters so what we want to do is just relabel these so that they're not negative and to do that we're going to use this really uh, simple function that I just learned about today called pretty um, and then we're going to specify that the breaks along our x-axis are going to be equal to the breaks that we're going to express, uh, express here so let's say y breaks so even though we chord flip this so that height is on the x-axis now, uh, anytime you're gonna rescale these or set breaks for your axes, you still have to refer to this as what it is originally, which is originally height is our y-axis. Okay, so for breaks, what we're gonna do is we're going to use this function called pretty, and pretty just scales out whatever you put into it. So we're gonna call in my data height and you'll see up here why breaks is equal to um, just the scale of our data uh, and it's evenly spaced and I think you can actually go into pretty and specify how many breaks you want by saying n is equal to you know if you want 10 breaks then n can be equal to break okay so then down here we're going to scale uh, our y continuous and then inside of this scale y, we'll say uh, breaks is equal to y breaks. And then we also need to add labels. And that will uh, be equal to the absolute value of y breaks. So it'll take all of these and they'll just say negative 200 is 200, negative 150 is 150, and so on and so forth. So then instead of negatives, we are going to get all positives. See, so there you have it. Um, you know, you can of course go in and make this look a little cleaner. So if we wanted to say uh, outline these so that there's a little bit of separation, then we could make the color of the outline white. We could say line width is equal to two. And there you go, now they're a little bit more separated. Um, but yeah, there you go. I'm gonna call it there, that's about eight minutes. So that's probably enough enough time to get across some bar plots but i like these divergent bar plots are kind of cool looking there's some se several good use cases so hope you found it in interesting hopefully this helps you um yeah let me know if you have any questions in the comments below